Sick. What's up? My name's Gentry. And I'm Savannah. And this is Appa, our 2006 Ford E250 camper van. So as for the van itself, um, I got the van at uh, 73,000 miles with a standard low roof cargo van. So when I got this originally, it did not have the high top on it. I actually found the high top at a pick and pull. It was an unshaped top, which we ended up shaping for three, four days with just a flapper wheel on a grinder um, and little by little shaping it and walking it down until eventually all the seams and the angles kind of lined up just how we're expecting. We started not even sure if it was the correct top for the van, but by the end of it, it all lined up and it looked perfect. Use butyl tape, stainless steel screws, and it is fully fastened on, fully waterproof, airtight, and we've had no issues with it over the last year and a half. So that's been pretty sweet. That awning was actually on the high top itself at the pick and pull. So when we showed up, we had a line of people also trying to get a hold of the awning itself. So for about two days, I would just show up to the pick and pull and I would guard the uh, top and keep people from getting the awning, which uh, was kind of a fun story until I can get a hand to come on up and help pop it off. Yeah, on top of the solar, um, on top of the high top, we got 200 watts of solar, uh, flexible uh, energy solar panels. We didn't want to have to add any extra height uh, more than it already had with the high top on it. We wanted to be able to make it down trails and stuff where overhanging trees weren't going to be an issue or the occasional parking garage, which I'm finding out isn't really an option. Yeah, as she sits now, high top cargo van with a couple uh, all-terrain tires on there. So we went with uh, the BF Goodrich KO2s. Just personally, I love the way they look. I think they work the best. I think every other all-terrain is just trying to be the KO2. So I'm pretty stoked with that. She seems to get around. Uh, pretty well all right hopping into the van um wasn't sure if i wanted to toss that high top in at first one big thing was we started as a cargo van and i was living in it as i was building it so it was a lot of trial and error and deciding what i liked what i didn't like and the, the whole build itself uh changed multiple times one of those things that changed was putting the high top on and i'd say standing height is about six two i'm six three and i can almost stand up so i haven't had too much trouble it hasn't bothered me other than the occasional bumping of the head when i'm hopping in the van as for the top itself it's the only area that's not insulated besides the cab for the walls we went with havelock wool um we debated on what kind of insulation we want to go with and landed there just because it's breathability mildew resistance um and i like the idea that it was natural and i wasn't breathing in fiberglass last thing i wanted to do was have fiberglass inside the van and a vapor barrier and all that stuff i've been pretty happy with it and since the fiberglass top is fiberglass and it isn't metal the uh radiant cold air and heat hasn't been an issue which we found uh, what we ended up doing was putting headliner material so just like you kind of find on the top of the car and it's gonna be it's been a nice tight weave so you don't even really notice it uh we lined it with that and uh i'm pretty happy with it as for the kitchen uh we ended up going with a butcher block countertop uh, we went with butcher block um one i just really like the look i like the look of that with the color we went with which was a sage splendor we debated that for a while um, i like the look of that light green sage look with the light butcher block counter as well inch and a quarter i'm pretty sure it is um keep it well oiled mineral oil is what we use we wanted to have a lot of maneuverability inside of a smaller space while also maximizing storage uh, so one of the things that was sacrificed was a little bit of a shallower counter now, I haven't found too much issue. It still fits a uh, cutting board here. And then if we need to extend it, we've got a flip up table here. And this has been game changing. One thing I didn't want to sacrifice by living in a van was cooking. I really enjoy cooking. We cook in here, I'd say three meals most of the, of the week. So cooking here hasn't been too much of an issue with both this flip up table and this two burner stove. The propane is stored right inside the counter in this area. Um, now you can see it popping out a little bit. This is where we pull in and put out our uh, propane. It's a 25 pound tank, which we were kind of shocked with. Uh, we've been able to run in that 25 pound tank for over a year before we have to replace it. And again, cooking three meals a day sometimes. So cooking has been great. Um, and then the sink, although it is a small sink, we went with a D 
deeper pan, which has been nice uh, for doing dishes. It gets a little tricky at times. Some pans barely fit. Cutting boards are a little tricky, but that's why we have the hose. It's also got a shower head on it if we wanted to put our heads underneath the water, rinse off, anything like that. So inside the kitchen, we have our main control panel. Starting at the top, we've got just temperature and moisture gauge. So we can see humidity in here and the temperature, which isn't always our favorite thing when it's uh, hot. But uh, as for the cold, our diesel heater keeps it pretty nice. As we go below that thermostat, we have our light switch. Now, uh, not only is it switch, but it's also dimmable. So dimming it's been kind of nice as we settle down for the night. We don't want it as vibrant and bright in here. It's been nice to dim that down and ease down for the night. But if we do want to stay up, obviously you're in your van and sometimes it gets dark at five o'clock um, and you're not ready to go to bed yet, we turn up the lights and keep us wide awake. We've got an auxiliary switch that we haven't used yet, but we left there if we ever wanted to add anything. This is our water pump switch. Um, so we can turn it on and off just in case there's a leak. 12 volt pumps, it'll end up leaking sometimes and we don't want to wake up to a flooded van. Yeah, so it's moving back down to that diesel heater. This diesel heater has been awesome. If you're looking at vans, you probably are already familiar with uh, how many people love their diesel heater. I can't boast about it enough. We ended up going with the cheap Chinese Amazon brand, which we don't regret. It's worked totally fine. Um, we had a pump go out at one point, but that was about it. Um, and to replace them is a fraction of the price as the really expensive ones. So click of the button, turns the heater on, and it gets it nice and hot in here nice and cozy um, and it keeps that moisture down we've got a 12 volt input there so any phones charging stuff like that and then anything we want to run 120 off we have a wall outlet here and our inverter which we click on from there we got 120 running for both this outlet and the front of the cab we only went with a thousand watt inverter our plan was just to kind of charge our laptops maybe a couple small appliances i think we ran an air fryer off it a little bit at one point but uh again it's mostly there just for laptop so that's our control panel all right, so for compartment number one in our below counter storage, um, we have our water system. Now we wanted to go pretty simple with the water system. We want to be able to change it out pretty quick, replace the water, dump the gray water, super easy. So what we ended up deciding to do was just 12 volt pump with an accumulator to keep things constant and steady flowing water, all draining down into a five gallon bucket. Now we've also got five gallon as for fresh water. Um, we wanted to do that just so we weren't overflowing our gray water tank and it's spilling over into the van. Also, when our gray water is full, then it's probably time to replace our fresh water. So they both come out super easy, fill up, nothing too complicated there. Other than that, we've got the other side is where our battery storage is. Now, it's not anything fancy in there. Um, I ended up building my own 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with the help of my dad uh, he and i got to work on that um, electrical was something i don't really understand especially with batteries so to resolve that i decided to build the battery myself that way i would know how to fix it if anything broke i would love to recommend this to someone um, but i hated it it was horrible building this battery now am i proud of it absolutely would i do it again i don't think so um, what's been nice is I do know how to work on this battery at least a little bit. So that's great. But inside there, we've got our inverter with a 40 amp DC, DC to DC charger. So that charges off our alternator as we're driving it. Um, so we have both solar and charging while driving that 40 amp DC to DC, uh, has been great. We can, we can drive 15, 20 minutes and get 10% on our battery and it being 280 amp hours of lithium. That's pretty dang good. Now we have a BMS in there as well that hooks up through Bluetooth. So that's taking care of all our safety needs, right? So over voltage, under voltage, too hot to charge, too cold to charge. It'll shut it off um, and make sure it's safe to do so. It's been pretty, pretty brainless when it comes to that. I've had no issues with my battery so far, which I am thankful for. And that Bluetooth app is nice because I can just check that every once in a while for voltage, the balance um, and temperature as well in there. In the back there, we've got the fuse box. May not be pretty, may not be labeled, but I know where everything is. And if I don't, after a little investigation, I'll figure it out. <laughs> Rich solar charger, I hooked up to those uh, Renergy panels. And other than that, we've got a little bit of storage up top and that's kind of where we keep our coffee stuff. So one thing you're gonna notice as we go through the van is it's gonna be fairly empty. And so at the moment, we're not living in the van. Uh, recently became domesticated, moved in with a friend. And as a matter of fact, the van is up for sale. So if it is still up for sale when this video goes up, We'll put that in the description and feel free to check that out. 
All right, so below bed storage. All of our drawers in this van, both front and in the rear, which you'll see in a little bit, are on 250 pound drawer slides. Now, uh, that was one, because I didn't want to have issues with them. Two, because uh, they have two functions. Now let's go over their first function, being storage. We have a couple latches. Uh, just because those uh, hinges did have their own locking mechanism on there, but I think through driving and shifting, um, they kind of gave out. So what we did was put the latches in, and that's been kind of bulletproof, which is nice. And it's something that I probably would have done in the beginning anyway. First latch latches uh, the drawers to themselves, and then the bottom latches go down into the flooring, which locks them down pretty securely. Top drawer. That's kind of where we put our spices canned food and our we had bowls in there utensils etc that's what we toss in our top drawer here all right as for our bottom drawer more of our canned food went rice all those bulk items that we might have stored up any other larger utensils pots pans this was one place they went now into the far drawer here we keep our trunk fridge in here pots pans anything like that will wedge into the side all right so for down in this area there's not only our, our bed extension it's also kind of our heater box so inside here is where the heater is located so it goes down back towards the wheel well and the exhaust goes down through the floorboard and is vented into our wheel well if you've used a diesel heater you're very aware of how hot it gets in here so even on its lowest setting, we find at night, we need to turn it off unless it's below 20 degrees. Here, we even run the diesel heater because they run so efficiently. We'll run the diesel heater with some of our windows cracked just to get the right temperature. So we didn't want to miss any space, any storage. Um, so what we made that area double as is a little shoe rack. So this allows us to put in his sandals, shoes. Usually this is super filled up right now. Like I said, we're not in the van right now. But yeah, it's doubled as shoe storage, which has been great. And it goes pretty far back as well. This usually will fill up with sunscreens, bug repellents, little doggy poop bags, which if you live in a van, get a bunch of doggy poop bags. They work fantastically for a million different jobs. Also, again, maximizing storage. Little tuck area down by the wheel well. Um, we tuck in um umbrellas. We have a bug net that goes around our door as well. So we'll tuck that in there um, just to prevent any bugs getting in so we can keep the door open uh, during the summer and stuff like that. So yeah, so those drawers, um, not only are they acting as our main storage, they're actually acting as our extension of our bed. So what we'll do is we will slide this drawer and that fridge drawer out um, as we're going to bed. Simply pulling on the bed, sliding it out, and extending it. So as of right now, it's extra short. So when extended, um, this becomes a full queen size bed. Setting it up at night and tearing it down was something that we were concerned with, um, but it's found to be easy task, just like making the bed in the morning, which is something we kind of want to do in a van anyways. Um, now I'm also saying that, not being the one that usually does it, but I do cook breakfast most of the time. <laughs> we don't really mind... Um, setting up and tearing down the bed every night and every morning um, for the last year and a half we've been doing it and it hasn't been too much of an issue now attached to the bed you we've got this lagoon table which comes off if you're not familiar with the lagoon table um, they are a ratcheting uh, hinge here that can tighten and loosen both in uh, here and two other places so it slides up and down rotates one week later hey it's been a week sun's out snow's melted and it brings us to the back of the van. This is where cosmetics get sacrificed for functionality. So it may not be the prettiest. We got tears in the bottom of our bed. We don't have any pretty sage splendor there on the, on the drawer covers, but we do have a little bit of cedar here up on the back as an attempt to make it look pretty. But like I said, this is where utility is more important. Storage was huge for us. Um, both of us are both skydivers, base jumpers, paragliders. We rock climb sometimes, uh, so we are gear heavy. What we lack in clothes, we gain in gear. So we wanted to have plenty of storage in the back of the van or our garage area. Here we have two very large drawers. Um, we can store a ton of gear back here, again, on those 250 pound drawer slides. So we could hide a body in here if we needed to. Uh, so we got tons of storage back here. Um, we can hold all our gear. Um, we usually kept Parachute gear, climbing gear here in this drawer. And then in this drawer, this was kind of our, our garage area. So we'd keep tools, roadside kit, 
sometimes some extra bathroom supplies and stuff like that. We also had a couple spots just to slide anything back here, right? So we have some of the awning legs back there that broke off from the awning. Any longer poles that we need, we'd slide them back in that area. And then in this side, this is where our diesel is stored for that diesel tank. This tank, we can usually run on for a week straight, running it on and off throughout the night and in the mornings. Been pretty sweet. And just like all the other windows, we have magnetic window covers. Work great, snap on and we can black out the entire van if we want to, if we are trying to be stealthy at all. Other than that, you can kind of see how the bed folds down. Uh, this pad is the pad that'll slide down and you can lay back here, you'll get a better view once that bed is extended. Now we're into the inside of the van. These cabinets here, we wanted as much storage in the van as we could get, just because it is a little bit smaller of a van. While he was building the bed, he built the side of the bed cabinets and we use these for kind of the smaller knickknacks that we had um, okay so the smaller cabinets on the right of this cabinet they are soft close but the bigger more important cabinet space uh, are these bottom ones but they go all the way to the depth the top of the drawer here um, so that's how deep down that they go um, and this one specifically we used as a hamper so like all of our dirty clothes would go there and having hamper was really nice um, this other side we use for kind of like clean linens towels all right so just for a couple things that we forgot um, one of them being the row of lights up here um, like I said these are all dimmable LED lights um, running on 12 volt this was a little bit tricky so with the fiberglass top we couldn't just drill into the top we couldn't, we didn't have any kind of support beams, any any studs to screw into. What we ended up doing was, these are two pieces of this cedar siding, um, and they are sandwiched together with a channel through the middle. Uh, sandwiched together using marine fiberglass adhesive to the, to the roof. And then those are sandwiched onto each other, and inside that channel is where we're running the wires. And that runs all the way down to our, uh, our cabinet down here. Now this cabinet down here, like we had pointed out, we cut down our vans or our wardrobe a good amount, but we still did have a lot of clothes being two of us, especially we had winter gear that we usually kept in the van. We didn't have a storage facility. We tried not to use one. Uh, so what we did was we used the front part of that high top uh, to our advantage. Instead of building shelves and anything crazy like that, uh, we decided to use just soft boxes. Those soft boxes are like ones you can get from Target. Pull them out, find the clothes that you need, and put them back without digging through a bunch of clothes. Also, come laundry day, it's nice to fold them, put them in the boxes, toss them right back into the cabinets. So that's been nice. Tons of clothes storage has come in clutch. Uh, other than that, come in clutch. Uh, clum. Other than that, we also enjoyed having these shelves. Uh, these shelves were nice for storing spices and and putting uh, hand soap, salt, pepper, oil, everything like that. We could set that up uh, when we were parked. Like I said, we were parked a good amount of time, so this kind of became our own little like trailer, mobile home. Uh, so we got to do that. This fan above our head, it's the Max Air fan. I think it's a 7200 model. It's the manual opening uh, top, which I wanted. Um, I didn't want any electronics to go out. Um, and this has been good to me, pulls plenty of air, multiple different settings. And when it pulls air, it's nice. We can pop these two windows out like they're, they are now. We can slide them open and it'll pull air from the top of the van where that heat is centrally located and pull it on through. Uh, we'll run it while we're cooking to prevent any uh, odor buildup, get the propane, uh, the burnt propane out as well. <laughs> All right, so yeah, as much as we'd like to say that uh, this van has been all over the U.S. and the different countries and stuff like that, to be honest, I think it spent at least 75% of its life parked in one spot. During the process of building it, I was driving it down to my parents' house, which, shout out to my parents, um, they were amazing. They, they allowed me to park in the driveway, make trips down, stay a week at a time. That one week turned into two long weeks or a month or whenever I could. Uh, save up some money to come down and uh, build the van. And then so, I think at the end, we were there for two months. Yeah, well, I mean, I got in an accident. I was injured, so I got to step away from work for a little bit, but it gave me an opportunity to finish up the van. So for a while, we were parked there for two months. 
uh, with a combination of rehabilitation and uh, building up the van. So that was pretty sweet. Uh, not only because it gave me a place to be comfortable and not worry about where I was building it, maybe on the side of the road, but that kind of brings me to one big thing. When it comes to building a van, I know it can be fairly intimidating for a lot of people, and it's not easy. You're going to learn as you go. But my one big thing is you don't necessarily need the largest set of tools or some crazy shop with everything in it. Um, I think what's more important than that is just have someone to bounce your ideas off of. Um, I was lucky enough to have my dad um, was one of them, and she was another one of them. My dad and I got to bounce ideas off each other. We would throw out an idea and totally expect it to be shot down by the other, and that was kind of the expectation. Uh, with every idea that failed, the next idea ended up getting better and better, and it grew. So that was something I really appreciated. So my dad helped a lot with that. My mom had great ideas, too, when it came to a lot of the other stuff inside, at least the interior. Um, so just having someone to bounce those ideas off of and letting them evolve into something that uh, is better than the original plan. Building this van, it, it, this isn't a Sprinter van. It doesn't have straight walls and right, right-hand right corners, and, and it's not set up to build in like some of those Sprinter. This was a cargo van with not originally not having a high top in it so nothing was straight nothing was uh perfectly the same one side of the van to the other so there were a lot of speed bumps that happened every time i came up with an idea we had to come up with 10 other solutions to how we can achieve that idea but in the end because of all those issues and speed bumps i think each idea evolved into uh, a better solution than the original plan yeah so where the van commuted mostly was between uh the skydiving drop zone where we met um and also where we'd lived for the last three years commuted from there over to my parents house where it was being built a lot of this time the van was was parked at the skydiving drop zone where they had facilities um, bathrooms shower although not the most luxurious at times um, it allowed us to have a place to shower wash our clothes but also have a safe place to park so at times sure this was we weren't urban camping very often in the middle of a city or or driving up in the mountains all the time other than a few trips don't get me wrong yeah. but allowed us to have a nice home um, in a place where we woke up and we were doing what we loved which was pretty cool so i'd say even though we didn't see the world in this van uh, we got to experience something we wouldn't otherwise experience but it also has all the capabilities if like that's what the purpose is so if the purpose is to travel it has the capability to go and travel it has the capability to be a stealth van like you can like we have stealth camped we have open camped like we have done everything we've traveled we've parked like it has a wide range of capabilities so um yeah 